Welcome to part two of how to make a robot that's fully controlled by ChatGPT. Last time we did the build process. Now we're going to get all the software set up and get this thing running. When I had initially ordered this Romeo BLE chip to replace the Arduino and all the other stuff, all of this, I didn't realize it was only BLE. I thought I could do regular Bluetooth as well, but I can't. So we're going to use the old Bluetooth from the development setup on this. We're going to just glue it right down here, right next to the Pi. That way it can definitely have good communication. The only part about it that's even remotely hard is making a voltage divider for one of these wires because the, uh, the old Bluetooth chip is 3.3 volt and so the Arduino is 5 volts so we need to bring that down to 3.3 volts for one of these wires. But that's easy enough. A few more wires to do for the build process and then we can get started on all the software. The wire that has the voltage divider, that's going to be going to the TX pin 1. On other boards, that will be pin 0. It'll be switched. But on this one, we're going to run it to pin 1. So ignore that I have the white and black wires switched on this part. I just accidentally plugged it in backwards at first. We're going to do the two signal wires and then the ground wire. Pull the two signal wires apart so you got some room to work with. We're going to be attaching one of the signal wires to the ground wire through a voltage divider. Cut the ground wire close to the end that plugs into the Bluetooth, uh, but leave enough room to strip the wire on the connector side. And then just strip that and strip the other side. And then we're going to solder a 3.3 thousand ohm resistor between these two sides, but just one side of the resistor. The other side of the resistor is going to be connecting to one of the data wires. Go ahead and cut one of the data wires the same way, but make sure you only cut one of them. And strip them too on both wires. We're going to add a 2.2 thousand ohm resistor between these two sides. It will be one side of the resistor connects to one wire and the other side of the resistor connects to the other wire. So we'll do the 2.2 thousand ohm resistor first on the data wire. Just going to twist the wires around each other for now and then we're going to solder them together. Go ahead and do both sides of the data wire. One to one side of the resistor, the other to the other side of the resistor. And this is what it should look like so far. We're going to take our 3.3 thousand ohm resistor and attach one side of it to the connector side of the other resistor, the side that's closest to the connector. And it'll look like this now. And I'm going to go ahead and solder everything that we've done so far together just for safekeeping. Next, let's start twisting the ground wires around the other side of the 3.3 thousand ohm resistor. And both of these wires go on the same side of that resistor. Then solder that together. Add the 5 volt wire for powering the Bluetooth. Cut the extra bits off of the wires and then give it a good wrap with some electrical tape. This is how you're going to connect the Bluetooth chip. Just like that. The black and the white are the signal. The white one is the one that has the voltage divider on it. That on this Romeo board goes to pin one. And the black one goes to the pin zero. And then five volt and ground, you can figure that out. Wrap it around through there and then take some hot glue and glue it down. Make sure you hold it while it's drying so it stays secure. And now your robot's brain can communicate with its central nervous system, I guess. Next up, we have to put the code onto the Arduino, get the servos aligned properly, and ignore the fact that the Bluetooth chip is suddenly gone in this because I filmed this before I filmed that last part. Well, actually, you will need to disconnect those two signal wires to be able to upload code through the USB. So go ahead and do that. 
hook up your USB cable. Unscrew the very center bolt that holds the camera arm onto its servo. You'll have to remove this wheel. Pull the arm off the servo. Just set it there and then upload the code to the Arduino. Once the code is uploaded, the servo will move to its default position and then you can remount the servo arm. Mount it so that the top of the arm is sitting level. Then just screw that middle bolt back down into the servo. Now you can undo the middle bolt for the head that attaches it to its servo and then pull it off and then put it back down to where it's aligned to the center. If it doesn't get perfect, that's fine. We're gonna fix that here in just a second. Just get it as close as you can to centered forward. Get the wheel back on and then we're ready to center the servo in the code. Here in the Arduino code, go down to center position right here. It'll be at 90 to start with. So we need to adjust it to calibrate the head to be centered. Our head was looking a little bit to the left. So left is higher numbers, right is lower numbers. So let's lower the number just a little bit to uh, make the head go to the right to center it out. We'll try 85. Guess there's not quite enough power going through the USB for the weight of the head. It works on battery power though, so don't worry if yours does this. That looks pretty centered to me, so let's go ahead and adjust the left and right positions to compensate. Since we subtracted five from the center, we're gonna do the same thing to the others. 65, take that down to just five. And then upload it again. And the Arduino setup is finished. Servos are calibrated. We're ready to move on to the Raspberry Pi. You'll need to install Raspberry Pi Imager onto your computer. And then choose whichever Raspberry Pi you're using. And then use the legacy operating system. Then whichever SD card you're using. And then go to edit settings and put in your Wi-Fi data and uh, uh, username and password for the Raspberry Pi itself. And then go to services and enable SSH, that way we can connect to it. And then press yes. Yes. You want to delete any data that's there already because you have to use the SD card for this. So it's writing to the SD card and it takes a while. Once it's finished, you can put the SD card into your Pi. Just slide it right up in there. The SD card will be upside down when you're putting it in. Give it a second little check, you know, make sure it's tight, obviously. Double tap. And then make sure you got the Pi plugged into its power cord. The one that goes into the battery hat. Flip the switch on. The Pi will start turning on now. And then turn on the Arduino as well. Next, use some kind of network scanner. I'm using advanced IP scanner uh, and find the IP address of the Raspberry Pi once it's connected to your Wi-Fi network. Here we got ours right there. Raspberry Pi Foundation is the manufacturer. That's definitely it. We're gonna copy the IP address and then we're gonna use Putty as our SSH client to get into the Pi. Give it the IP address, say yes right there. And then log in with the username and password that you created when you were making the SD card. Open up Raspberry Pi configuration. Go down to interface options and turn on legacy camera. And then interface options again, I2C. And then reboot after that. And you'll get this error message because the computer shut off. So go ahead and close out of this window. Give it like five minutes to reboot and then open it back up in Putty with the same IP address. Log in, type in this really long command. Don't worry, I'll put it down in the description so you can just copy and paste it. That'll download the setup script. 
Now we're gonna install the screen system. Uh, that way you can have programs running when you're not connected to it. Then do screen dash capital S and then name the screen robot. You can name it anything, doesn't matter. And sudo python3 setup.py dash dash mode install. And then this is gonna take a while. So yeah, once that's done, the Pi will restart again. You'll get the error message again. So just give it another five minutes and then reconnect. Once you're reconnected, then you're gonna start another screen because the old one's gone because the computer restarted. And then do command sudo python3 setup.py dash dash mode test. If everything goes right with this, then you're done with setup other than getting your API key from OpenAI and running the main script. All right, we're ready to go. Unplug your plot. Unplug the Pi from the. Unplug the Pi from the power and set the robot on the floor. Now run sudo python3 main.py. This is going to start your robot up. And then you'll need to get an API key from OpenAI. You'll have to put some money on your API account and then put the API key in here. And now the robot is listening for you to say the word robot, either by itself or in a sentence. Hello robot, welcome to the world. Hey, can you look up at me real quick, please? Hey, I see you're nearby. Can you tell me more about what you'd like me to do? I'm here and ready to help. Look up with your camera. Hello. Can you please tell me more about what you'd like me to do or observe? I'm eager to assist. Wait, are you asking me what your purpose is? So it's still a work in progress, obviously, but the possibilities are endless. And once they keep upgrading the models, then it's just going to keep getting smarter and smarter. And there's obviously just an infinite number of software upgrades that can be done on the robot as well. Okay, I'm over to your right side now, so come over here. Hey, turn to your right and come this way.
Don't just keep moving forward. I told you to turn right. Yeah, so GPT-40 Mini is not as smart as regular GPT-40. There is a huge difference, but there is also a huge price difference as well. And that concludes our tutorial for how to make a robot that's fully controlled by ChatGPT. It can only get better from here.